You ever been to a uh, pep prep pep rally where they just start clapping real slow, and then it like gets quicker, and then it gets quicker, and then it gets quicker, and everybody's clapping, and then it's like, and then everybody gets all excited and they stomp their feet. That's not what this is going to be like because I'm not there with you. I don't like this format, guys. How you doing? Tom Dunn here. You guys know me. You guys know me. This is my fourth year. I'm OG. What's up? The very first conference. I cannot believe. What year was it? 2017. So 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. Four years. Raise your hand if you remember my first year take on the world. I went up there and my notes didn't work. My good friend Chad Schaefer tried desperately to help me. And it came to a point was like, okay, we got to go on. We got to go on. I was pretty studied on what I had to say. So I had a lot of things memorized and we just went through. What a day. What a day that was where I finished up my talk and so many people came up to me and I got to talk I got to minister, I got to pray, I got to hear from, I got to meet so many people that day. Wow. I cannot believe that um, here we are, uh, 2020, and look where we're at, guys. Look at the circumstances. Um, I wish that I could be face-to-face -face with you guys. This is a little bit awkward, honestly. I'm talking to a camera right now. I'm not even talking to anybody live. So it's even more awkward for me. I would rather be in front of a million people than be in front of this one camera. And especially with nobody there even watching me live. I don't know. I don't know. I choke. I struggle in these formats. So that's a little disclaimer there. Um, hopefully, hopefully that won't happen too bad. But if it does, I already put it out there. You know what's going on. Um, I would like to be, I would like to be face to face with you guys. This has been a heck of a year, has it not? Has has not this year been a roller coaster of emotions on so many levels? I have some time here today to share what's on my heart, but I, I can't. I can't even scratch the surface of what I'm feeling. I can't even scratch the surface of what God's been doing, of what I've been asking God, of what I've been seeing in other people, and all of these things, and the things that I don't understand. That's why I wish we were face-to-face, -face so I could hear from you, because there's a lot of things I don't understand. And, and when we fellowship, iron sharpens iron, and we can hear from one another, and we could, you know, just uh, just bring wisdom to one another. And I um I talked to Chris. God bless Chris and Liz Bailey for continuing to do this year after year. And I know that they wanted to do this um, uh, in person so bad, and it didn't work out. But it's okay, guys. Here we are, and uh, 2021. That's another opportunity. We don't we don't know where we're going to be. Um, there's no way we could have predicted that things would be this way this year. But uh, I, I wish we could uh, we could just um, hug each other's neck and pray and fellowship and just spend you know hours talking in the gym and then stepping in you know to to get to see the other speakers and just kind of when you're a speaker it's a little bit different because. You're so busy. And I'll tell you what, take on the World Conference for me is so, so super busy. Um, just so much, so many great things happen at that conference. And really, um, I have to say, it has a special place in my heart. It really, really does. And um, I'm bummed that I can't be there this year. Um, I'll tell you what, preparing for this is a little bit easier other than the fact that I've got to talk into a camera. Um, I um, I had a trip planned earlier this year, and it was going to take place in March, and it was a big, big deal. And I can't, it's a big deal, such a big deal that I can't even disclose what it is uh, publicly yet. Um, 
and it was out of the country. And this trip was going to be what I based all my talks on and the information that I got on that and more exposure into the to the things that we've already been doing. And of course, that trip got canceled. Uh, it was actually the day of the uh, European travel ban took place the day that I was supposed to fly out. And I could have still flown out, but I just, I knew that I wasn't supposed to do it. And a couple of my flights got canceled. My daughter was going to get married. So I didn't want to miss her wedding. I wasn't going to get stuck in another country uh, a long way from my home. And I'll tell you what, the week after, just actually just a few days after I didn't get on that plane, um, it was chaos. And I was glad I was here with my family, guys. Um, but you guys are my family, too. And I miss you. Um, and uh, I don't like that this is keeping us apart. I don't like it a bit. But we're going to do the best that we can. So I want to I want to share some things with you that are on my heart. And we're just going to we're going to do the best we can. Um, it's it's more comfortable for me to be there in person and just to see the look on your face when, when I'm sharing, when I'm telling. And I see the compassion in your eyes. I see the emotion um, when I share the things that I share. And you guys know, you guys know what I do. I don't know that I need to introduce myself again, but one sentence, I expose satanic ritual abuse, okay? The other stuff is out there. You can go look it up, okay? Um, but I want to go directly to Ephesians chapter 6, okay? And uh, take a look at that. And this is going to lead us down something that's just, uh, uh, I feel uh, impressed upon um, to talk about. And I don't know if this is for you or if it's for me or if it's somebody else or, or what, but this is what I find out, that it's always for somebody. It's always for somebody. So in the times that we're living in, I feel like this is an important message. So Ephesians chapter 6, and um, this, is, uh, this is something that everybody's familiar with. I'm going to skip over a few things. You guys can go back and read it if you want. But uh, verse 13 says, Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes with the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, so the full armor of God. Paul um, is is pretty direct when he gives us this um, this chapter here in the book of Ephesians. The full armor of God, not the partial armor of God. A lot of these things, you know, probably the number the, the two things that we talk about the most are the shield of faith. And the sword of the spirit, okay. Um, the and that makes that makes sense to us because um, those those are foundational things when it comes to our faith. Okay, is um, the word of God, the sword of the spirit. That's that's what we believe. We believe this word. This is we we stand on this. We believe everything in here and all of the crazy stories and all of the things that um, the world rejects and uh, we we believe it. Uh, whether it's Noah and the Ark, whether it's the parting of the Red Sea, whatever it is, um, we believe in the Word of God. So that's a given, okay? Um, and those two things go hand in hand: the shield of faith, because. It's our faith, not in the word of God, but also in God, that God protects us and he saved us, okay? So, so we know from experience that because he's been here, he's going to be there. He's, he's been in our past and he's in our present, so he's going to be in the future. So we lift up that shield of faith. Now, everybody has um, a, a different level that they're on. Some people's faith is really strong. Some people's Faith is in the middle, and some is weak. And then 
even we as individuals can go through those times where we have strong faith to where we have weak faith. I've been there, okay? I've been there. And if you're new to, to me, uh, and if you're new to anything, um, uh, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler alert, I try to be as transparent as I possibly can. I don't like to come on here on my high horse and say, hey, guys, you need to have real strong faith, and there's no excuse that you shouldn't have real strong faith. Um, well, guess what? God's word is um, tells us that we should have real strong faith, um, and I, I believe that we should, and it encourage us, encourages us, and God has done a lot for us, so we should have real strong faith, but do we? Not always. Not always because we're human. And... Um, May, you know, I don't think if our if our faith was real strong, we wouldn't even need God's word. OK, but we do need it because it encourages us and it shows us reasons to have strong faith and how to build our faith and reading it builds our faith. So those are things that are um, that are a given. OK, the helmet of salvation. Yeah. I mean, you got to be saved. OK, so you you have to have that thing fastened to your head. All right, because the enemy is going to come along and conk you on the head and say, you ain't saved. You don't know Jesus. OK, so and um, we want to make sure it's secure. OK, we want to know that we're saved. We want to know that we belong to Christ. Um, we know we, we should know that we have a relationship with him. It would be just like uh, somebody trying to challenge me on my relationship with my wife. OK. Um, I have a relationship with my wife. I know her. And the same thing with uh, with the Lord Jesus Christ. He saved me. Uh, he walks with me and he talks with me. Okay. And um, yes, I know him. And uh, the belt of truth, it's the, the, the uniform, you know, it's the middle of the uniform that holds everything together. And uh, of course we seek truth. We seek truth. And that's what many of these conferences are about is we want, we want truth. And if we don't have truth, then everything falls apart. You know, your whole uniform is shaky. OK, the gospel shoes is what we call them. OK, evangelism, the Great Commission. That's what we're called to do. And there's people that struggle with that. There's people that are missing that part of the uniform. That's not good. That's not good. We need to have the full armor of God. OK, so in the past, OK, we've talked about these things, but I feel like a neglected part of the uniform is the breastplate of righteousness. OK, so I want to spend a little bit of time talking about that. I feel compelled to talk about that. I feel like this is a neglected part of the armor, the full armor of God that maybe uh, we need a little bit more study on. We need a little bit more focus on. So we have the full armor of God. OK, it's important. And if you think of a breastplate, this is a this is a piece of metal that protects your vital organs, okay? And um, it's it's a very, uh, very important part of the armor. So um, defining righteousness, what is righteousness? It means being morally right, okay? So now I'm not going to get into the, the scripture so much about um, what I'm trying to say here is, okay, obviously we have no righteousness of our own. We put on God's righteousness, okay? Our righteousness is as filthy rags, okay? And we know what that means. So, but what I'm talking about, and when I say the devastation of the wicked, that has several different meanings, okay? In the title of this message, okay? So um, I could have titled this, practicing righteousness okay but maybe nobody would have clicked on a on a on a talk or maybe they would have went and ate lunch on a talk called practicing righteousness because that's not something that's very exciting okay but the devastation of the wicked or the original name devastating the wicked okay um this is key information okay um we can be devastated by the wicked okay if they get an arrow or a sword through to here to our vital organs, you know, um, my uh, my uh, stepson the other day got a package in the mail, and he uh, it was a uh, it was a bulletproof vest, okay, 
and I tried it on and man, it was steel plates. It was like, bam. And I said, somebody punch me, somebody punch me. And a couple, you know, uh, my younger son just like took a couple swaps, nothing. I did. I felt nothing. You know, there wasn't even a shock. There wasn't even a pushback, you know, and it was just like clunk, clunk. Yeah. You know, so the breastplate of righteousness is a vital piece of the full armor of God. And it's my job today to bring that to your awareness, to remind you of that. Okay. And to take a look at some scriptures concerning that. Now, before I go down this road, Tom, what are you saying to us? You're saying that we need to be perfect. Are you saying that we can't make any mistakes? Are you saying that we can't sin? I'm saying you shouldn't sin, and I shouldn't sin either. Nobody should sin. We don't have to sin. We make a choice to sin. But I'm not telling you that I'm perfect, and I'm not telling you that you have to be perfect. We can't be perfect. If we were perfect, then we would not need Jesus, period, okay? So, um, but I'm talking about practicing righteousness, practicing righteousness. Um, there's a lot of things that we could talk about when it comes to this. Okay. So I think about a friend of mine who was an attorney and she, uh, she took a job in China actually, and she met some Christians from China and she kind of had an awakening meeting these Christians from China. And what happened is she realized how worldly she was and how many things she let kind of uh, slip through the cracks or just um, she gave a pass on, okay? And she asked herself, shouldn't, shouldn't Christians be the same across the board? If you're a Christian in China, shouldn't you be the same uh, Christian in America? Why are, why are there differences around the world? So that's my challenge to you. That's my challenge to myself. Okay. I am by no means perfect. You take this and you do whatever you want with it. I, I just have the responsibility to deliver it. And then I also have the responsibility to apply it to my own life the best that I possibly can. Okay. So don't forget, you've heard me in the past talk about a blind spot, okay? Do you have a blind spot? Yes, you do have a blind spot. So do I, okay? Uh, all of us have blind spots. Uh, well, I, I don't see my blind spot. No, it's called a blind spot. That's why you don't see it because you're blind to it, okay? Um, I'm probably not going to be able to tell you about your blind spot. And you're probably not going to be able to tell me about my blind spot. OK, because I can't see it. And you know what? You or I, if we began to talk about these things, we could get offended. I'll be honest with you. I've had family members. I've had people bring things up to me. And my um, my uh, knee jerk reaction is defense. And then as hours go by, as the next day comes and then I begin to think about what this person told me. Uh, I hate to admit it. But yeah, I think I do have an issue with this. Okay? So, okay, if you want to avoid awkward situations like that, ask the Spirit of God, Lord, do I have a blind spot? Show me your word. Show me your word. You know what? That would be awesome because that saves somebody like me having to come along and make things uncomfortable. And I'm not one for calling out people's blind spots or calling out people's sins or anything like that. Guys... I'm not coming in on my high horse. I don't want anybody doing that to me, and I don't want to do that to anybody else. And I rarely do it unless I really feel convicted. Okay, now, as Christians, we are called to judge other Christians, and we're called to be accountable to one another. Okay, that's that doesn't make it any easier. And that doesn't even mean that we do um, church discipline the right way. OK, a lot of Christians don't know how to do church discipline. And this is not a message about that right now. OK, but I want to talk about practicing righteousness, the devastation of the wicked or devastating the wicked. How can we do it? You know, um, 
people are asking, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? This is what we can do. This is one of the things that we can do. Okay? We have to stand for what's right, for what's morally correct, for what's morally right. We have to do the right thing. What is the right thing? What is the right thing? It's the right thing is not necessarily what you feel it is, okay? Because our feelings and God's word are two different things, my friends, two different things. Now, let me say this. If you are in tune with the word of God, and if you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, then you're going to be in tune with righteousness and you will be convicted if you do something wrong. Okay. So folks, I I'm trying to give as many disclaimers as I possibly can, because I love you so much. I care about you. And let me tell you, let me tell you that we we help a lot of people and we get a lot of emails and a lot of phone calls and we do a lot of, I'm not supposed to say the word counseling. Okay. We do a lot of mentoring. We do a lot of deliverance. We do a lot of, okay. Um, we do a lot of, a lot of things. Okay. And, um, I, I see people wreck their lives over this issue because they're trying to justify something that just can't be justified, okay? Um, you know, a pastor told me years and years ago, this is kind of crazy. Um, he said, what cannot be crucified will be justified. In other words, if we can't, if we can't nail it to the cross, then we're going to try and find a way to make it okay, okay? So, hey, I'm guilty too. Okay, of whatever it is. And that's a scary place. That's a scary place when we start trying to justify sinful behavior or immoral behavior or immoral practices. Okay. And I'm telling you that the world, the flesh, and the devil, those are our enemies. And sometimes all three of them come at us. Sometimes it's one, sometimes it's a combat, whatever. Okay. But um, I always tell people, I don't need the devil's help. I don't need the devil's help. And, and I've had times in my life where I think the devil sits back and is like, man, I don't even need to mess with Tom. He's doing enough damage on his own. Okay. And what I just said, you can relate to that, right? Okay. So, guys, let's take a look at some stuff. I want to share with you. I, I, we, we took a look at, uh, at um, the breastplate of righteousness in Ephesians chapter um ephesians chapter six and everything that we're talking about because the time is so short this is why i wish we were face to face because so we could just pour over the scriptures and talk about them and so many things come out when we get to do that and guys i just imagine myself okay just standing there at take on the world up there on lake erie the last place that we had it and just seeing the people in the crowd and just um I love it. I miss you. I miss you. So, okay, Proverbs chapter 14, 32 to 34. Um, uh, much of this that I'm going to share, it just speaks for itself, guys. Um, for, uh, Proverbs 14, 32. When calamity comes, the wicked are brought down. But even in death, the righteous have a refuge. 2020, guys. This, this message is a message for 2020 and it's for for everything that we're going to see going forward it's truth it's that it's it's amazing you know how again going back to the full armor of god how it's all connected okay the belt of truth salvation is true god's word is true okay I want, I want to read that again because it's so important. When calamity comes, the wicked are brought down. But even in death, the righteous have a refuge. Wisdom reposes in the heart of the discerning. And even among fools, she lets herself known. I love how Proverbs refers to wisdom with uh, female pronouns. 
Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. I can't, I can't come after that. That says so much. That says everything right there. And we see this. So this is a reminder to practice righteousness. We are surrounded by a people that love wickedness. They love hurt and pain and and destruction, and they love just stealing the innocent of children. They love murder. They they love everything that is evil. So we have to double down on our righteousness. And I'm not talking about perfection. I'm talking about practicing righteousness, okay? And don't forget, I already said, our righteousness is as filthy rags compared to God's, compared to the holiness of a holy God. Yes, the best that we have is nothing compared to him. That's why we had to take him on, but we're still to practice righteousness. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. A lot of Christians get comfortable with the idea of it's okay to sin. It's not okay to sin. It's not okay to sin. Do we sin? We sin. It doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it okay. And if I'm talking to you, I'm talking to me, guys. And I, I am just I am just here, okay? And I, I feel like I'm beating this horse to death. Because this, the sword of the spirit, the word of God is sharp. And I... Um, I cringe when I cut people with it. It cuts me, okay? It cuts me, but if it cuts you and I cut you with the word of God, then I'm doing my job, okay? And I do it out of love, okay? So let's go to 2 Timothy 2.22, and I have these marked here if I can find them. That's not it. So hang on, folks. That's not it. Hold on one second. Second Timothy chapter two, verse 22, two, 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 two. Did I do two, four twos? Okay. Um, here we go. Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Don't have anything to do with the foolish, stupid arguments because you know they produce quarrels. I love, I love the word of God. I love the word of God because it's just truth. It's truth. And I have so much confidence in God's word that when an atheist or some person preaching Darwinism or Satanism or anything like that, I'm not shaken in the least bit. I, I love the word of God. It, it's just, just, it's an immovable rock of truth. And it charges us to put away youthful lust and to seek after righteousness. You know, if you look at uh, Proverbs chapter one and you see these, um, you, you see the uh, the verses there, and it's talking. It's it's telling somebody, hey, don't go out and rob somebody. That's Tom paraphrase, okay? And some people are like, ah, duh, we don't need to be told that. Well, yeah, you do. A lot of people need to be told that because a lot of people are robbing people, and they're ruining their lives. And it's powerful, powerful. I don't want to dumb it down and call it advice. It's divine inspiration. It's it's um oh I'm gonna I'm gonna search for something here and I wish I would have 
thought about it beforehand. Just something I learned from Russ years ago. But it's um, it's inspired by God. You know, many times you guys have heard me say that it's impossible for this for this book to have been written in this dimension. Okay, every verse is connected to every other verse. Okay, powerful, powerful inspiration breathed out by God Almighty. So let's go real quick to Romans 6, 18. And I got to go backwards for this one. I'm pop, is this right? Okay. Uh, Romans 6, 18. And all of this is going to be familiar. This is just a, um, a refresher course. Okay. Uh, in, in many, many ways. So let me go. Let me, let me just start real quick at 15. I'm going to go quick. Okay. What then shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace by no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourself to someone to obey him as, as a slaves, you are slaves to the one whom you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or you or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that through you, that though you used to be slaves to sin, you wholeheartedly obeyed from the, excuse me, you wholeheartedly obeyed the form of teaching to which you were entrusted. You have been set free from sin and how and now become slaves to righteousness. Sorry about my horrible reading. Um, I'm way beyond the point of, uh, of needing glasses. That's my excuse for today. And have become slaves to righteousness. Righteousness, we've been saying it for a few years now. That's the new rebellion. It used to be that in order to, to rebel, it had to be sex, drugs, and rock and roll. But now sex, drugs, and rock and roll is the norm. So in order to rebel, we are righteous. We are holy. Righteousness is the new rebellion against this filthy world. A line out of a song. Um, fascination of filth, filth on everything I touch, completely just a, a dead world, the smell of death. That's what I'm thinking of. The smell of death on everything I touch. Slaves to righteousness. This is what we're to be. What does that look like? I don't have time to talk about it here. I know what it looks like in my life. And I don't think, I don't think it varies that much. I believe in personal convictions and I believe there are things that, um, that I, I feel strongly passionate and convicted about. Okay. And if, if the occasion arises and I need to share that with somebody, I will. Okay. There are things that, that I can't do. Um, and the same may be true for you, but God's word is the plumb line. God's word is the foundation for what truth is. And there have been many times where I've been convicted about something that really wasn't a big deal. It was more of a tradition, something that was taught to me and it, it wasn't necessarily a righteous issue or a sin issue. And maybe you've experienced that also okay um as we grow we mature in our faith and we learn more let me move on um did i just i just read romans so let's take a look real quick at um at titus and i hope i marked everything that i wanted to mark um okay i already did i did timothy sorry guys i got a bunch of marks poking out at me i don't know where any of them are okay Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. So, for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. Live self-controlled, upright, godly lives in this present age. What is it? The, for the grace of God has appeared. 
for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared. Upright, godly lives in this present age. Okay? This is talking about a different time. I'm talking about 2020. And even though this is written 2,000 years ago, I can say this is relevant to us here and that we are still called to live righteous and we can be set apart. Guys, there have been many denominations, many doctrines of man, many things that um, that that we can talk about and we could debate about that are, is it, is it okay? So this is something that I think that I think is, um, and, and maybe you guys think will think that I'm contradicting myself, but I, I think this is true. If the world thinks that we shouldn't do it, then we probably shouldn't do it. Okay. Now, now, everybody, don't freak out on me. Don't freak out on me, okay? Because there's a lot more. There's a lot more, okay, that the world does not have a clue about, okay? And I'm just saying that sometimes I'm shocked when I hear the things come out of Christians' mouth, Christians' mouths, and I see their actions, and to be fair, I think some people have been shocked the same way about me. Okay. So again, I'm not coming in on my high horse. I'm not coming in and saying I'm a, saying that I'm holier than thou. But let me tell you for me, and I just have to be completely honest with you guys, okay? And maybe some of you guys can um, can identify with this, with what I'm going to say. For me, my motivation has been my family and my kids, okay? So I believe the Bible says the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. I believe that. that God's word says that. Okay. And I want my prayers to avail much. And I've got people that are counting on me that I'm praying for them. And I want to keep my nose clean. I want to live right. I don't want anything between God and I. Because I want to be able to approach his throne of grace with the best that I got which is not much, but I want to bring obedience. I want to be obedient. I want to serve him. And guys, if I, if I were to sit here and to think about my life and you could do the same thing, we would probably, you know, after a little bit of time, be in tears at how ashamed we are of who we are. But that that is because we serve such a holy God. He is so holy. There's no way. There's no way that we can get near him without the shedding of blood, the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. So I, I feel like, you know, the theme, and you guys know me, I just kind of shoot from the hip, okay? The theme is a lot of disclaimers, but I, I want you. I want you to know where I'm coming from. I'm not coming from a holier than thou place. Okay. Um, I I take what I do very very seriously, and so I know when I talk to people and I see the look in people's eyes many times, and they tell me I couldn't do what you do. Okay, and speaking about deliverance and that sort of thing um, because they have habitual sin in their life that they can't shake. They can't, they got, they have strongholds in their life that they can't break guys. It can be done. 
Um, it can be done through repentance and renunciation and turning away from sin. You can get set free. I'm a witness to that. Okay. But what I'm saying is I see people and they're like, I can't do what you do. I can't do what you do. And, and the reason why a lot of people say that is because they know that they have sin in their life and you can't go kick out the devil or kick out evil when you're doing that. And that's true. I would not recommend it. Don't forget the seven sons of Sceva, you know, and uh, the examples that, that we see of this. So anyway, I kind of lost my spot. I told you something like that was going to happen. But um, Titus chapter two, okay. L let me read verse 12 again. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. You know, I love, love the writings of the New Testament because uh, Paul and the other writers were instructing the early church. Hey, guys, I don't know if you know this, but you're not supposed to be doing this stuff. And some of the things going on among you, the pagans aren't even doing. Okay? So there was a lot of instruction to a lot of knuckleheads, okay, in these passages. And he said, God's grace that brings salvation has appeared, and it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. We have worldly passions. But again, I want to say to God, Lord, I want to walk this out. I want to live this scripture. It's 2020, and I don't know what's going to happen, but it's not going to be good. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve you. And because of your grace that has appeared, that brings salvation, you are going to help us say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and walk that out. That's spiritual warfare, guys. That's the full armor of God. Okay? Righteousness. Righteousness practicing righteousness. I think for many people, what this is going to be, it's going to be a confirmation for them. That's great. I love confirmation messages. So, hey, you're welcome. You're welcome, guys. Um, let's take a look here at Matthew chapter 6, 31 to 33. So this is the red letters. Matthew 6, 31. Um, well, let me go back up. Let me go back up and we start at verse 28, okay, guys? And why do you worry about the clothes? See how the lilies of the field grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, Will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith, so you do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? For the pagans run after all of these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all of these things will be given to you as well. I went... Um, I went Monday of this week. I got called out to a house. Never, never knew about this house. Never knew about this person before. And long story short, here's a guy that turned his back on God 19 years ago because his brother committed suicide. And he basically said, God, I don't need you. You let me down. My brother committed suicide. I don't want to have anything to do with you. He lived his life like that for 19 years. He was kind of a thug gangster wannabe type guy and um so i went and i spent hours with him and i prayed with him and i led him in prayer i led him in prayers of repentance i read him and i led him in prayers of renunciation and this guy it was quite interesting he was he was legit he was legit in in the way that let me, let, let me say this. This guy had a mouth like a rap artist, or as they say, he cussed like a sailor. Now, many times when somebody likes that meets a guy like me, they're constantly apologizing because they're slipping up. This guy was not apologizing. Yet, 
he was repentant and he was in tears and he was realizing how much he needed God. And um, the part of the story I didn't share is basically about a week and a half ago, demonic presence showed up in his house manifesting. And he finally ran into something that he couldn't handle on his own. And he knew he had to turn to God. And I, I, I wish I could just give you all the information, but I am convinced that he was sincere. And he said, I'm not going to do anything to do it. I said, I'm going to do it all the way. I know I need God. And, um, you know, I could have sat there and I could have said, okay, you need to do this. 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 You know, I went, we went through the house and we prayed through the house. I went down to his room in the basement and he basically had a shrine to Tupac Shakur. Okay. And, um, my direction to him was not get rid of all this. My direction to him was dig into God's word and God will direct you if you're sincere if you're sincere because getting rid of all that is not going to um that's not what's going to do it okay because you can you know I, I can i can say things to him you know about his blind spot or, or what he doesn't see and if it's not sincere if it's not coming from a sincere place of renewal and repentance then it's not going to be anything he'll just go out in a couple months and replace it all so there's a lot of work to be done there. And anybody that meets this guy last Monday or maybe even today, they might think, wow, this guy is not righteous. He's not righteous. Now, I would say that Christians probably shouldn't cuss. Okay. And the Bible even tells us, don't let any un unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. At the same time, I hear a lot of the do. OK, that's not my issue. That's not my thing. So it's easy for me to say, hey, don't do it. OK, um, a lot of the people that um, that I know that do that, they can point at my life and, and say things about me. OK, what whatever, whatever, guys, this message is about righteousness and it's between you and God, not you, me and God or you and somebody else and God. OK, but. You know, uh, I love I love the saying, and hear me out, the saying by Tupac, only God can judge me. Um, that's actually not true, Tupac. There's a lot of people that can judge you, okay? Um, you know, your family, your friends, the courts, the police, there's a lot of people that can judge you, okay? Now, I get it. I know what you mean. I know what you mean by that, but, you know... Um, a lot of people parrot that only God can judge me. That should scare you to death. Okay. I'm thankful that the savior, the hero of humanity, as my friend Russ Dizdar calls him, the hero of humanity, Jesus Christ covered me. So his righteousness is what would be seen when God looks at me because my righteousness is filthy rags, guys. I don't know what this means to anybody. I would love, love, love to hear your feedback and love to, to know what you thought, guys. Uh, anybody can send us an email at throughtheblack.connect.outlook.com. You can reach us there. Um, this is not the normal thing that we talk about and, and that I share, but I felt compelled to, to just to make a focus on the breastplate of righteousness in 2020. Guys, the full armor of God is vital. We cannot have the partial armor of God, and that goes for everything. Um, I, I sincerely wish that I could sit down chair to chair, face to face, and I, and I had the time to talk to you guys and hear your heart about what's happening. I think a lot of us need to spill, spill our guts. I think a lot of us have a lot of things to say. And it's been difficult because we, um, we're hungry for fellowship and we're not getting it. And I, I just wish even more that we could talk. And, you know, 
small groups are fine. I wish I could just talk face to face with you guys. And if time were to permit, man, that would be great. Again, when we go, and last year Colleen and I were there, and the year before it was Jared and I, and um, there's so many good things that happen at these conferences. But I'll tell you what, take on the world. So that has a special place in my heart. And um, we can sit and we can judge one another. And if we're honest, we do stereotype. We do judge. Um, people have judged me and I've judged other people. And it's happened to take on the World Conference. Let's be honest. Let's be honest about it. Okay? But whatever. God has called us to righteousness. And if I seek after that, and if you seek after that, and we do it sincerely, and we don't do it by, you know, by pouring God's word through our own filter. Okay? And now... I realize that even what I just said there is loaded because many of us have a different take on, on so many issues. But in 2020, the division is devastating to the body of Christ. Our enemy is focused, our enemy is sophisticated and, and, and able to network. And he's running circles around the body of Christ while we are fighting about trivial things. Get this, I'll let this microphone get away from me. Guys, we gotta have unity. And this is something that I've been saying recently. Um, can we just get rid of killing babies and raping children? And then and then after that, when we do that, then we can argue about some of these other things that we disagree on, uh, just concerning interpretation of scripture or beliefs or whatever. And hey, I, I don't care. I don't mind to be wrong if I, if I am wrong. I, I don't care. I honestly don't. I want to save babies. I want to save kids. I want to see lives change. I want to see hearts healed. And I want to walk this scripture out in righteousness. <laughs> so um, you can judge me and I can judge you. But, and let me read it to you, okay? And Christians, we're called to judge Okay, and we're called to be accountable, but I don't stand in judgment. Okay, I, when, when when you die, I won't be standing uh, on the judgment seat of Christ. I won't be there. I'm not going to be your accuser. Okay, that's the devil's job. And let me tell you, folks, something. There, there is something rearing its ugly head that that I'm going to be talking about very soon. That there's a group that's coming out and it's not the one you're thinking of. You probably never even heard of this group. Many of you have not. And they are attacking the body of Christ and they're claiming to be a part of the body of Christ themselves. And so far I've said their behavior is very cult-like. I'm very close to calling them a cult. So stay tuned for that. I don't, I don't even want to open that can of beans. Honestly, I don't have time to, but if God compels me to do it, I'll do it. Okay, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of whom we must give account. You know what? I appreciate what you have to say, but it doesn't come near what I just read. And you should feel the same way about me. Everything. Everything is opened up for God. This book 
knows you. This book knows me. I, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated by our some of our divisions. I really am. Just because I just see the damage that it does. And I work hard. Um, I work hard at Through the Black. And this is our other website, throughtheblack.com, to, um, to keep the peace. And I, and I appreciate others. And I see this a lot. People that disagree with me. And they work hard to keep the peace because they know that our disagreement is um, is not a salvation issue. It's not a doctrinal foundational issue. So I'm just, you know what? I don't even know where I'm going to go on that because I'm wrapping this up. But I just, I came here, guys, to give you my heart today. I appreciate Chris and Liz so much for allowing me that. And one of the things that, that Liz asked, is what what can people do what can people do there's a lot of things that we can do but this is my message today seek righteousness we saw the solutions connected with the actions in the verse that i read today okay the solution the cover the protection okay righteousness exalts a nation yes i know we live in a wicked nation I know we do. So that's why, that's even more of a reason that we can't be divided on these trivial issues. Hey, let's talk about them. Let's even have a friendly debate about them. Okay? Let's do that. But let's not be divided. Okay? Because our enemy is going to devastate us. The devastation of the wicked. And there is your final definition of the title. The wicked is going to devastate the body of Christ, okay? Now, now, don't forget, don't forget Matthew. Jesus said, um, I have built my church on the rock and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, okay? So that's true. And I'm not going to take away from that verse. And God built his church 2,000 years ago, and what he says stands, okay? But here I am, and here you are, and we have to stand on the message of unity, the message of righteousness, the full armor of God. 2020, guys, we need it. We, we don't even know what's coming next. We don't even know what's coming next. What can we do? What can moms at home do? Righteousness. Righteousness. I could take a look at your life and it would be easy for me to make a list. And you could take a look at my life and make a list. I would go to God and I would say, Lord, give me a list. Show me. Show me. Because God is the best at revealing blind spots. And we have to pray, Lord, show me. How many times has he been faithful to that prayer? How many times has he showed me something that was hidden that I couldn't see? Because he sees it all. And we're really good at defending ourselves and protecting ourselves, guys. Guys, I love you so, so much. I just want to close by just asking you to check out Real Dark News. That's our news website where we try to expose a lot of wicked stuff. That's what we mostly and normally do. Okay. Um, realdarknews.com. If you share those stories, if you share that website, if you tweet those stories out, thank you so much. Thank you for all the support. Thank you for everything that you've done. I'm blown away just by the friends that I've made from Take On The World. I We're going to talk a thousand years in heaven or more just about these times right now. So God bless you. We'll see you next time. Okay.